the oracle with you now. Greetings, young scholars. Today we're going to take a look at a poem by Winston Hugh Auden, more commonly known as W. H. Auden. Yay! He wrote a lot about society, uh, social issues, anxiety, uncertainty, a lot of things people faced during the 1930s. The time of the Great Depression, the Spanish Civil War, the rise of Hitler and Mussolini. Quit smiling, you idiot. You're supposed to be a professional. Uh, we too live in a time of great anxiety and fear for the future. But sometimes we get so wrapped up in our day-to-day -day lives, we don't pay that much attention to the suffering of others. And that's what today's poem is about. Musée des Beaux-Arts was written by Auden in 1938. He was living in Belgium at the time. The German army would be invading about 18 months later. The title refers to a museum in Brussels. He had many opportunities to visit the Musée Royal des Beaux-Arts, or Royal Museum of Fine Arts, during his stay there. And one painting he was struck by was this one, Landscape with the Fall of Icarus, attributed to Peter Bruegel. Bruegel? 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 Peter Bruegel. In case you've forgotten your Greek mythology, the Icarus legend, no, not that one, this one. Daedalus was a great inventor. He worked for King Minos of ancient Greece. He designed the labyrinth that held the Minotaur. But he told Princess Ariadne to tell Theseus to use the thread after killing the Minotaur to find his way out, which infuriated King Minos who exiled Daedalus to an island as punishment. Now, Daedalus couldn't escape by sea. It was too well guarded. So he had to leave by air. And so he made giant wax wings for him and his idiot son Icarus to fly away. Of course I say idiot son because despite the fact Daedalus said, don't fly too close to the sun, the wings will melt. What does the boy do? Right. So let's take a look at the painting. But before we do, I want you to pay attention to one thing. Where does your eye go first? For me, I look at that big shiny spot in the ocean and then at that plowman with the red shirt. It's the only red in the painting I see. Other things you might see are that castle on the island or the ship. But I bet that nearly everyone doesn't look at this detail first. Check that guy thrashing around in the water. That's Icarus, who's just fallen from the sky. No biggie. Okay, that's enough preamble. Let's do this! Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Sorry, Cap. Not an option. About suffering, they were never wrong, the old masters. How well they understood its human position. How it takes place while someone else is eating or opening a window or just walking dully along. How when the aged are reverently, passionately waiting for the miraculous birth, there always must be children who did not specially want it to happen, skating on a pond at the edge of the wood. They never forgot that even the dreadful martyrdom must run its course anyhow in a corner, some untidy spot where the dogs go on with their doggy life and the torturer's horse scratches its innocent behind on a tree. In Bruegel's Icarus, for instance, how everything turns away quite leisurely from the disaster. The plowman may have heard the splash, the forsaken cry, but for him, it was not an important failure. The sun shone as it had to on the white legs disappearing into the green water. And the expensive, delicate ship 
that must have seen something amazing, a boy falling out of the sky, had somewhere to get to and sailed calmly on. This poem is part of a long tradition of poets who look at different pieces of art and react to them, like a reaction video on YouTube or a duet on TikTok or a film review. I myself enjoy reading Roger Ebert react to a bad film. That's art too. We've seen it before uh, with John Keats and Ode on a Grecian Urn. So, uh, Auden sees this painting and the speaker, we might as well say Auden since he was in Belgium at the time, and he notices what he notices. It makes him think. The first part, he doesn't go to the painting itself. That's in the second section. He's going to make us wait. Usually, it's the other way around. You start with the chambered nautilus or whatever on the seashore, and then you go figurative and metaphorical. Auden switches it up, and I think it works here. These old painters, like this one, this could be a self-portrait of uh, Bruegel. Anyway, they knew what they were doing when it came to painting people in crisis. Yes, she's good too. Auden starts by giving us context for it. When someone is suffering or having some life-changing event go on, someone or something else just doesn't care. They're living their lives. Which is weird, right? Your life could be falling apart, and someone else... Well, how about this scene from 1994's Street Fighter, starring Raul Julia and Ming-Na Wen to explain? My father saved his village at the cost of his own life. You had him shot as you ran away. A hero at a thousand paces. I'm sorry. I don't remember any of it. You don't remember? For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. So, first stanza, we're talking about these old Flemish painters Auden sees in the museum. And what do we notice? There's suffering happening. Three examples. Meanwhile, someone else opens a window, walks dully along. Everyday stuff. The second one, line five. Older people are reverently and passionately waiting for a miraculous birth. Meanwhile, the older child, maybe, doesn't care and spends time skating a nearby pond instead. But the last one, though. Someone is being martyred. Yikes! Meanwhile, even though this is, quote, dreadful, elsewhere, there's dogs going on with their doggy lives. What a great line. <laughs> like nothing's happening. And even the torturer's horse is scratching its butt on a tree. All these incredible, noteworthy events and some pretty commonplace scenes spliced to them. You could say quotidian. There's a word for you. Then we get to the painting. We've got the disaster of Icarus here, but Anna notices how everything in the painting turns away from it, or doesn't notice it. And it's the way they do it, too. He says, quite leisurely, turns away. It's the artistic equivalent of, meh. The plowman especially. Quote, for him it was not an important failure. The ship, which is right next to the boy, is sailing, quote, calmly on. NBD, no big deal. The ship had to have seen it. A boy falling out of the sky. Come on. So what's Auden's point? Well, I think it's, this is what people are like. Our problems, our tragedies seem huge to us, 
But to other people, often strangers right next to us, meh. That the problems of three little people don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. Thanks, Rick. That's human nature for you. So this week, then, I'll need you to write a one-page essay, and you have two choices. Number one, take a work of art and write a one-page poem about it. In your poem, you'll describe some aspects of it, and you'll also describe a lesson that we can take from it. Now, when I say work of art, that's a pretty big net. After all, who's to say that Tiger King isn't a kind of art? Or someone dancing to Kesha isn't art? Or you could go a more traditional route, but I say have fun with it. Option number two. More traditional. Talk about some time in your life when you were suffering greatly and had to be around people who weren't really all that invested in your circumstances, or maybe weren't even aware of it. One last thing. I know that things have been confusing with finding some things in Canvas, but I'm hoping all that's been sorted now. We'll see. We'll all be flexible here. So, this week, we will have a fairly easy quiz on Invictus, Ars Poetica, and Musée de Beaux-Arts. Maybe 15 questions, so review those poems, if you would, and take the quiz. Honestly, there will be one this time. I'm going to go call the psychic hotline. They'll know what to do. Nice. All right, then. This has been Mr. Cell saying, have a wonderful day, and let's be careful out there. <laughs>